History is about to be made as one of the fiercest rivalries in sport comes to life on the courts here in Cape Town for match for Africa. We got the chance to pick the brain of Roger Federer with his 103 career singles titles and 20 Grand Slam titles as he gets as excited as we are for match for Africa. <laughs> Welcome Roger. Well, I think while we are here, we should start a tradition with the Q&A as you take a seat, Roger, just to have a toast to, to you, to being here in Africa and for your very first match for Africa. Yeah. Well, I'm uh, obviously very, very excited. Uh, the first uh, match for Africa was 10 years ago with Rafa mm -hmm. uh, uh, in Zurich. Uh, I then returned the favor, went to play in Madrid for his foundation and that he's coming back, you know, for... Uh, the sixth edition now here in Cape Town, far away place, you know, for tennis players. That's why we haven't been here enough, nearly not enough uh, for uh, in recent years. Uh, it's very, very special. I'm incredibly excited. I've pl played a lot of tennis here in South Africa when I was younger, but never, uh, you know, uh, in a big stadium. It was always just with family and friends and everything. So for this to finally happen is, um, is a dream come true. Um, all for the foundation as well, makes it even so much more worthwhile. Everybody's um, also so excited to see me. It's, mm -hmm. uh, it's great to see what a, what a welcome I got yesterday at the airport already. Okay, it was just mostly media, but uh, <laughs> you, get, you, you, get, you, get, you, get, you get the feel that uh, uh, it spreads the word that I'm here now. And uh, I just hope it's gonna be a wonderful uh, event for everybody tomorrow. And uh, Looked at the match sold out in, in 10 minutes for 50,000 people, and it's going to be a world record. I, uh, I couldn't believe it when it happened. I was so uh, frightened when they said, let's try to do the big stadium. I was like, okay, well, let's, uh, I might as well give it a go. And uh, it all worked out. So now we just hope for good weather and then a good match. So thank you. And I'm sure it will all come together. I mean, I loved your Insta post just the other day where you got us all reminiscing about when you first thought of Match for Africa with Rafael Nadal 10 years ago. How awesome is it to have him back on it and to have it here on African Soul for the first time? Well, I mean, like, look, I mean, people make a big deal that I'm here, but I think it's a huge deal also that Rafa's in South Africa and uh, playing on this continent, which is amazing. He's a great guy, great person. Um, he supported my foundation, I've supported his, uh, as big as our rivalry is, we, we are really good friends off the court, maybe we're not best friends because he's got his life in Mallorca, I got my life in Switzerland, and I got my kids and everything, but uh, he's, he's wonderful, and when I asked him the very first time a couple of years ago if he, if he was willing to do it, um, he was like, yeah, absolutely, let's just figure out a date, and then that's <laughs> where you hit a roadblock, you're like, okay, how's your schedule, how's my <laughs> schedule, and you realize a few years need to go by and some, a lot of organization needs to go into it. But uh, as we speak, he's, a, he's, a, he's landing, and uh, I'll see him in a, in a few hours, and uh, it's, uh, I don't know, I can't thank him enough for doing it, I just thought it'd be, he's the only right uh, player for me to play with here uh, in, in Cape Town, in South Africa, because um, I have this good connection with him, and I thought if I could bring Rafa for all the people here in South Africa to see him play here as well. I think that'd be very special for everybody, so I'm very happy. Well, we're going to talk about Match for Africa in detail in just a moment, but let's talk about Moet on Chandon. And why do you think it's more than just a champagne? Well, they've been around for a long, long time, much longer than we have all been around, probably all, in all accumulation we've been together. But they, they're they a wonderful brand, you know. Look, they've celebrated so many incredible moments. They've been there in the most uh, emotional and best moments of a lot of people's lives. Um, I've been uh, fortunate enough to work with them since 2012, and uh, I knew about the brand. They've been, you know, all over the place in sports and in tennis as well. And when I went to visit the sellers and I saw... I mean, how big it is, how amazing uh, it is. It's like watchmaking, you know, it's so detailed. They care so much about everything. Um, I got very proud, of course, uh, to be their ambassador. And, uh, yeah, like you said, it's so much more than just champagne. It's a way of life. It's a, um, it's a character as well. Um, and I think that's why maybe they think I'm a good guy because I do many other things than just playing tennis. And uh, Moet does the same thing. They stand for really great uh, values. And uh, I love that about the brand. You know, we've been anticipating this match for Africa for, for months now. The city is excited, the country is excited, and the continent is excited. Can you give us a range of your excitement levels? Yeah, I mean, look, I'm only finding out now that uh, how excited they are, because when you're 
in Melbourne focusing on trying to s save seven match points, you're not focusing <laughs> what, uh, what the situation <laughs> is uh, down here. But now that I've arrived here and I hear that um, hotels are happy, uh, that uh, you know, uh, there's a lot of people in town, uh, it makes me very happy. Uh, it's, it's, uh, it's really special for me to be playing down here, to be here. Um, I missed being here for the last 20 years. Um, I was in Cape Town 20 years ago, the last time I was here. I've been to Joburg a couple of times, but other than that, I've, tri I've traveled now uh, more to Namibia, uh, where I was yesterday, and also um, to Zambia and Malawi for, for projects. And um, I have family here, and I will, I will visit and see them all and uh, get around. My wife's also coming for the weekend, which I'm very excited about. So uh, no, it's going to be so, such a special uh, occasion on many levels for me to play here. and. Uh, this is my first public appearance, and uh, I'm happy to see that like everybody's looking towards me, and like is very excited for me and for my foundation. Everybody, it's it's really really special. Yeah, there's almost an energy that is just permeating the entire city. So break it down for us. What is the idea behind the project Match for Africa? Well, it's really about. Uh, I'd be very shy to make. Uh, matches for Africa to be honest because I don't like to shout about uh, the work I do in in charity I feel like it's something you need to do with passion um, but it is an opportunity to raise money also raise awareness I guess at the end of the day because uh, a lot of people get inspired by events like these you know or by listening to people talk about philanthropy it happened to me too you know when I met uh, Tiger or I met uh, uh, Andre Agassi and, and he once told me that he wished he would have started his foundation sooner um, and he was 27, I think, when he started his foundation. And so I said, okay, I'll start early, learn by doing. When I was 22 years old, and I thought it'd be, be really nice just to get going somehow in some shape or form. And it was small, it was very simple with a project in, in Port Elizabeth, you know. Uh, in Beirut was a project uh, that I was there, and it was an was amazing vi first visit. And I've always wanted to um, support children. You know, we do a lot of kids' clinics around the world. And uh, I wanted to do education. You know, for me, education was really important because in Switzerland, you moan about it, like, oh, I have to go to school again. And even as much as you like it, you also don't like it. And then in other parts of the world, they would die, you know, to, to go to school and get, a, get an opportunity. And it's not something you can take away from a child, you know, as a good, solid education. And through, I think, the matches for Africa, I can highlight a little bit of that and have fun with other players and maybe inspire other players to also do great things in... In, in charitable work so there's many reasons to do it but a lot of effort goes into it um, and it stresses out the team but uh, uh, I'm sure it's going to be a, a great great evening tomorrow night. I remember in, in 2018 when uh, Moet on Chandon surprised you with the celebration just honoring your 20-year career and at, at that stage I remember you saying something along the lines that your ultimate goal would be for people to remember you more for your foundation than for your tennis career. What did you mean exactly by that and how do you make it a challenge accepted? Well, I, I was speaking more about it being a dream of mine, you know, that uh, because I know I've, I've done well in tennis, you know, uh, and, uh, but I also get this opportunity through, uh, you know, through my charitable work uh, to do, make a, a lasting impact on, uh, on children's lives, you know, and if I, I just said, if, if I could be more famous one day for my charitable work than my, my tennis work, I think that would be wonderful. Now, will I achieve that? I don't know, but uh, at least I can try and then give my best to there. And, and then maybe yesterday was a wonderful trip. Met the president there, went to see students in schools and teachers and seeing on the ground the impact that we're having. It's wonderful to see. And uh, this is only the beginning, really, because now I'm so, so busy with chasing all these tennis balls down. Uh, but once when that all ends, uh, and that's probably rather sooner than later, unfortunately, I will then... Uh, uh, have much more time also for, uh, for, for field visits and meeting more and more people and doing events. Just hearing what you're saying though, Roger, it, it reminds me of uh, something that uh, our former president Nelson Mandela, Tata Madiba, said almost exactly 20 years ago. He mentioned something about the power of sport. How would you define it? Yeah, we do have a lot of power. I think uh, we saw it with uh, the Rugby World Cup win. I mean, what that, how that moved the continent and uh, the, the whole, whole country. That was wonderful. <laughs> It really was. Congratulations <laughs> again. Um, so it really has an uh, incredible power. I mean, we, le we learn how to lose and, um, and win very soon in our life, uh, get cheated as well, and you have to deal with it, you know. And then you, you move on from there, and uh, next thing you know is like you have the power of the microphone, you have chances to, to change people's lives through inspiring them, speaking to kids, and um, telling them what they should, maybe shouldn't do, um, them meeting you, seeing you, 
maybe seeing you live on on TV, like here in this country, you watch so much sports, and uh, we, the athletes, really have uh, an unbelievable opportunity. And uh, I hope that all you know, big um, uh, sports understand actually the power they have. So Nelson Mandela clearly was very right with his was his big enormous quote, which is still resonates today to this day. I love you speaking about Africa, so I'm going to ask you about uh, something unexpected that might have happened on one of your trips to Africa. I know you've had many. Was there anything unexpected that's happened to you? I, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, well, I mean, I got, I got frightened by all the, the big animals you have over here in Switzerland. <laughs> we, we don't even have bears. So uh, when I went on safari and, we don't uh, have bears. and the elephants come too close to me, I get scared. When the, the rhinos are right there, I get scared. Um, when you got the little spider coming or scorpion, uh, scorpion coming, everything frightens me. Um, so um, that's why I did the Bear Grill show to see if I could <laughs> overcome. Tested, uh, yeah, yeah, I got tested eating a, fi a fish. Uh, what is it? With an eyeball of a fish and stuff. Anyway, um, so that that's been, uh, um, yeah, that's been fun. But uh, yeah, and then. And then food, you know, um, I like my food, but I don't yes. need to go crazy on the, the so different So not too adventurous as far as food goes. I did have Biltong yesterday, and the Bora <laughs> and the Braai and everything. I was ready to go, so I'm, I'm really happy to be yeah. here now. I think that's mandatory. You have to tick that off. Come to yeah. South Africa, have some Biltong. But it's, it's really been some journey, Roger, for you as a tennis player. What would you say it means to be a champion? Yeah, I mean, uh, there's many different ways to, to look at it. Um, I think uh, a champion doesn't necessarily be, needs to be the one that's actually in the media, you know. Uh, I know we highlight that person, but uh, for me, and uh, I think that's also how my pa parents educated me. They're unfortunately not here right now because they're busy doing other things, but uh, they told me always be, not, be kind and nice to everybody, you know. Uh, you always see them twice in life, and uh, there's so many just parents you know being a parent is so much hard work you know so i think they were a champion for me you know everybody goes through that uh, that everyday grind of uh, trying to be a good parent and teaching their children um and i think uh, if you do good um as often as possible i think for me you are a champion so i try to do the same wonderful uh, Roger, last one from me is just about career and career-wise is it better now than it's ever been Good question. Um, I mean, it's great right now, <laughs> but you know, I did enjoy my uh, time on tour when I was growing up a lot. And uh, all of a sudden, being surrounded by the guys in the locker room from the guys I knew from TV, um, the Sampras, Agassiz, Henman, you know, Kafelnikovs, uh, Moyas, you name it, they're all coaching against me almost nowadays. But uh, <laughs> anyway, that was for me very special. Um, a special time all of a sudden playing on center court at Wimbledon against my heroes and idols. Uh, couldn't believe it happened because I, I had dreams, but I don't think I dreamed this far in my dreams, you know, that I could be all of a sudden playing with them, beating them. Um, oh, maybe I was hoping, maybe one day winning Wimbledon, fine. But uh, I achieved that much more. But uh, now I think I have a profound love for, for the game and I'm a returning guest to so many pl places where I, I go to. Um, it's very nice to see all those guys again. Um, traveling with the family right now, it's something I never expected to happen, you know. In, in my vision when I was a young boy, I didn't see four kids running around with my wife trying to organize everyday life. Um, but it's so much fun to, when I look up to, like, that's just straight and open, I think one of the um, third or fourth round matches, uh, they were there, sitting there, and... I never thought I would be playing in front of my children, you know, so that's been very nice. And uh, I have so many friends around the world right now from all these tournaments and all the players. I get along very well with all of them. Um, I think this must be the best time of my, of my career right now. And there's still maybe a little bit more to come, who knows? And if not, I've had a wonderful career and I'm very happy right now too. No, long may it continue. <laughs> and one last thing, more matches for Africa? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> yes, I hope so. Uh, we'll see the body, how it's going to be once I'm retired, how, how fat I get or something. No, I'm joking, I'll, I'll stay in shape. But uh, um, yeah, it'll be interesting. I, I don't think I will be able to sell out 50,000 people. for they don't, People don't want to see a retired guy because the moment you're retired, they're like, okay, you can't play tennis anymore, right? Even though you still can, just not on a daily basis, but you can still play great. But anyway, I will do keep doing matches for Africa. Actually, it might be easier to do uh, it might be smaller venues but also you could do um, 
nice dinners, raise money, auctions, you name it. I mean, it can be, become very creative. And then we'll do a yearly thing, or we do it in several places around the world. I mean, the, uh, it's endless uh, ideas, really. But uh, this one is by far the most special that I've ever had. And uh, I'm so happy that Trevor Noah is coming, Bill Gates is coming, Rafa's coming. They're all getting together for this great cause for me. I'm, it means the world to me and all the people here. I hope most of you guys are in the stadium uh, tomorrow and just have a great time. Uh, it means the world to me. So, uh, no, this is not my last match uh, for Africa, and I hope it's not the last match in Africa as well. I hope I can come back, back of course. Wonderful. That's what we love to hear. And Roger, I, I hope that after every next title that you win, you say there's room for one more. That's right. Yes. One more. <laughs> Keep going. No, I'm, it's all good. I mean, I mean look, I, we'll, we'll see how much more I can win. Um, but it's been a good start to the season. Definitely a bit lucky to make the semis after all. But uh, my injury is uh, pretty much healed, even though I haven't really tested it. But I know I'm fine. Um, and here we go. New season. Season number 21 or 22. Um, and... I got Dubai and Wales, Miami coming, taking off the clay court season, except the French Open. So uh, I'm looking forward to the next uh, six months, and it's a big year with the Olympic Games as well in Tokyo. Um, so a lot to look forward to, and I hope to, uh, to ho have, hopefully have another great season. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Roger, for your time, for Thanks your for words. Coming. Let's raise a glass to Roger, to making positive change and to making a difference, and also to more matches in Africa. Thank you, everybody. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers.